Well, as we mentioned earlier, people are flocking to our local parks this week. It's the biggest week in American birding. Meredith Gilbert is a Division of Wildlife staff member, and she joins us this afternoon. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. I imagine you got out to the parks today yourself. I did. It's, it's pretty <laughs> sunny out there, pretty windy out there. So. Yeah, pretty windy, yep. too. At least we had a little bit of dry weather for it's people to nice. get out today. Yeah. So uh, a biggest week in American birding. This is... Uh, you know, why our area? What are these What are these birds doing here? Yeah, so <laughs> we are uh, one of the best places in the world to see migrating birds, um, particularly the songbirds. Everybody's mostly here for the warblers, yeah. um, but we have tons of species that come up from their wintering grounds in the south, um, and they'll travel up through the United States, through mm -hmm. Ohio. Some will stay and breed here, mm -hmm. um, but many of them will continue further north to their breeding grounds. And they don't stay that long, do they? They don't. It's a <laughs> very fast, frenzied few weeks um, that we get to see these wonderful, colorful warblers and songbirds come through. Mm -hmm. um, they're really just using our area as a stopover site. They're coming here to rest, to refuel, before they make that jump over Lake Erie. Well, I'm glad that we can accommodate them and yes. help them to re <laughs> rest and relax and provide a beautiful place for them to <laughs> to chill out. Uh, what kind you mentioned, you know, the, the warblers or songbirds, but other will there be other kind of birds that people can see this week too? There are tons of mm -hmm. birds coming through. So of course our songbirds, our warblers are the tiny, colorful, mm -hmm. um, beautiful birds that we see, but there are lots of um, shorebirds, water birds, all sorts of things really coming through. Um, believe it or not, there's a very large uh, blue jay migration happening as well. So even some of our common birds that travel shorter distances mm -hmm. um, are still flocking through too. So the blue jays are going to probably Toronto maybe, right? <laughs> They're headed up to Canada. So um, beautiful birds to check out. Where's the place to go? Where do we need to go? We are so fortunate up here in Northwest Ohio. We are the, absolutely the place to be um, from Maumee Bay State Park all the way east mm -hmm. um, along the lake shore. There are some fantastic places. Um, I do have a couple of personal favorites. Yeah. Um, McGee Marsh Wildlife Area is the hot spot mm -hmm. for warbler migration. Um, so the boardwalk at McGee, it, it's this beautiful forested beach ridge. Um, it really is a trap for those migrants. So mm -hmm. it's it just, uh, they concentrate very, very heavily in there. Um, we have Metzger's Marsh, Marsh Wildlife Area, Ottawa National Wildlife Refuge, and Howard Marsh Metro Park just down the road as well. So depending on where you are, you can probably get somewhere relatively easy. Yes. And we know that people travel here from all over the place, so we we're do. really lucky to be here, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. Very, very lucky. We are very fortunate to have not only the habitat, the wetlands, and the forested areas that hold these um, birds here, um, but just to be so close, it's really amazing. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I've been outside and I look around and I hear birds and I see them, but you know, if I really wanted to get into bird watching, how do I get started with that? What do I need? Well, I think that's one of the best things about bird watching is that really you don't need much. Um, I mean, you can spend a ton of money if you want to on beautiful binoculars and, and upgrades and everything, but really you just need your eyes, your ears. Um, it is recommended that you get a pair of binoculars as okay. much as, you know, the, the best that you can. Um, a bird book is really helpful. Um, and then if you're out there, Birding, don't forget sunscreen, don't forget your uh, hat, water, snacks, that sort of thing are very helpful. Comfy shoes, um, of course, as well. You know, I have a feeling that if I were to go out there and I didn't really know what I was doing and I looked kind of lost, there would be some experts out there who might help me. Yes, um, <laughs> this is a fun time of year because there are so many people birding in a lot of these areas and everyone is very happy to tell you what they're seeing, mm -hmm. very happy to point you in the right direction, identify a bird for you, mm -hmm. um, make sure that you're getting the best experience. I'd probably, oh, it's a yellow one, you know, but yep. I guess, you know, when it comes down to it, it may not even really matter all that much because yep. we're looking at beautiful birds and beautiful wildlife, aren't we? Absolutely. It's really, it's all about taking in the experience, enjoying the the many birds that are around you, even if you don't know their names, just <laughs> enjoy their colors, enjoy their beautiful song, and just really take into that experience and, and realize how lucky we are to be here. Mm -hmm. The songs really are beautiful. They I, are. Can we hear the warblers, you know, maybe at my home or something like that in this area or not so much? Yes. Um, it depends a little bit on where you are and what type of habitat you have in your house uh, around your area. Um, so they are insectivores, so they won't be coming to your feeders so much. Okay. Um, they're eating insects. Um, so, but if you have shrub brush, areas in your backyard, you definitely could be seeing them. Okay, so uh, now is the time because, well, the, the biggest week in American birding wraps up, I believe, Sunday, right? Yes. yes. Uh, will we expect to still see some of these birds hanging around a little bit afterwards? Yeah, absolutely. So um, most of the migrants will be going through this mm -hmm. week, last week, this week, and then mm -hmm. probably the week following. But we have some late migrants that go through um, later into May. And then we have some birds that obviously stay here yeah. and, and breed here mm -hmm. in Ohio. 
Um, and then come August, some of the shorebirds that have um, um, gone up to their nesting grounds in Canada and further north, they're coming back down. So uh -huh. the, the fall migration starts coming back down in, in about August. We'll catch them then as yes. well, maybe. <laughs> yes. uh, just a, a beautiful time to get out there and catch them. Hey, it, you've been out, as you mentioned. Have I feel like we have more leaves on the tree. You know, has that, uh, you know, yeah. impeded any of the seeing any of the birds? It does feel very leafy pretty early this mm -hmm. year, and I don't know if that's because of a little bit warmer weather, a right. little bit wetter, um, but it does make it a challenge. Um, <laughs> these are tiny songbirds. We're talking right. very, very small songbirds that we're trying to find. Um, thankfully, they're brightly colored, mm -hmm. so that is helpful, um, but the leaves can make it difficult. It just takes some patience um, and maybe a, a keen eye to be able to spot them. Bring those binoculars, as yes. you said. It would be good to grab a pair. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. Thank we you so much for having me.